Okay. How is everyone? Uh, due to popular demand from uh, literally all three of my Discord staff and moderators, and actually they are also the channel moderators, we have created a Minecraft server. And I I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm saying bad things are going to happen. So. If you guys want to join, it is a very lightly modded Minecraft server. The IP to that will be down in the description below. It is pretty much very lightly modded, just a few terrain mods, uh, a few extra blocks, and the rest are core mods. We have Optifine in there, a few plugins just to keep things safe. Uh, there's Factions plugin is installed, literally just to keep things safe. I will literally ally everyone until they start griefing. But yeah, I mean, 1.12.2, Forge, um, mod pack down in the description below. What else is there to say? Join, have fun, don't grief. But yeah, I thought that gave me an excuse to make a video about our free NAS here. Yes, I have free NAS still running. So if you guys have not seen how to set up free NAS, basically it allows you to create a server out of your old device, whether it's a laptop, whether it's a computer. And then from there you can run Minecraft servers, you can run Plex, you can run all the goodies like that. So if you guys have not seen that video yet, right up here, it is going to be important. You need to set that up before you can set up the Minecraft server. So we have FreeNAS running. Now that we have FreeNAS running, let's move on to actually installing the server because that's what you guys came here for. Let's do it. Okay, so we have FreeNAS running right here. And what you are going to want to do is you will want to go into plugins, right? So once you go into plugins, it gets pretty damn simple from here on. You will want to choose a pool for creating your plugins. We, I showed you how to create a pool in the previous video. So we're gonna choose the mystical as our main pool. And from here on, literally FreeNAS makes it so simple. That's why it's such a great software. Look at this. All you do is if you want to have a Plex server, you click on it right here. If you want to have a Nextcloud server, you click right here. Jenkins right there. And what we are going to be playing with today is MinoS. Totali is here as well, actually. If any of you ever had Plex, Totali is great. It allows you to check everyone and anything that's happening on your Plex server. But we are going to be playing with this, MinoS. What MinoS is, it is a GUI interface for installing Minecraft servers. So you won't need to play with the terminal. You won't need to play with anything like that. All you do is you access it through MinoS here. So all you do is you click install right here, click continue. Uh, it's going to ask you whether you want to use DHCP, NAT, etc. Jail name, let's just call it mine OS. Uh, it wants an IPv4 address. All of that should be dedicated to it automatically. So let's just click save. And now it's gonna install mine OS. So now you literally just wait for this to install. My mom has saved me from certain doom. She bought the good coffee again. Also, <laughs> this thing, you guys, the Zoom stuff started coming in, so I started recording for that yesterday. So, um, yeah, this is the light bulb that will probably burn down my house. But yeah, I started recording for that yesterday. Uh, so I'm not gonna spoil anything. It's actually pretty good. Like, it's it's decently okay. Like, um, for example, the phone case came yesterday. I, I'm actually digging this. Like, it's, it's pretty cool. So, yeah. Okay, this is taking slightly longer than I thought it would, so I will be right back to you once this is complete. Okay, so what I did, you guys, is I literally just changed from NAT to DHCP because DHCP will define the IP address for the MinoS server automatically. So we're just gonna keep it at DHCP, and I would recommend you use DHCP as well, and now it's installing fine. So, yeah. Okay, coolio. So we are now fully set up. As you can see right here, plugin installed successfully. So you just click close. And then what you want to do is, as you can see here, oh, I have two of them, I accidentally installed two. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm literally just gonna stop the MinoS one because we have the Minecraft one and that's the only one we are going to need. Basically, the other one was not DHCP. I created this one as DHCP. You can create it as NAS if you like. I prefer DHCP, but hey, entirely up to you. So here you go. Uh, as you can see, this is the admin portal. It's what you are going to use to control your Minecraft servers. And yes, you can have multiple ones in one MinoS container. So you will only need one MinoS for your entire Minecraft server base. So you just copy this IP right here, uh, check how much RAM you have. So I believe this thing has, oh, it has a, whoa, okay. Okay, so let's paste and open right here. And you will need the default username and password. MC server, MC server. Okay, cool. So the default is MC server and the default password is also MC server. Just make sure to change that so that you don't like 
completely forget about it later on. Okay, so as you can see right now, we are in the interface and this is pretty cool because from here on, it's really simple. You just click create a server, you give it a name, just like that. You select your difficulty, you know, I only play hard because I'm a true gamer, so. You select your game mode, you select your level type, which for me would be OTG because we're using open terrain generator. But because I'm gonna show you how to create a vanilla one, we're just gonna leave it as default. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba. Everything else stays the same and create new server, just like that. So now you have a new server created. What you wanna do now is you wanna go into profiles you want to select either Forge, Feed the Beast, Mojang, all those. So we're just going to select Mojang. We're going to select the default 1.16.1. You want to click download, download the latest release, go to server status. This is where you control the server. Select the version you just downloaded right here. I'm going to select broadcast to LAN so that it shows up on local LAN. Uh, we are going to give it, well, we had seven gigs. Let's give it 1000. Okay, change the runnable jar to the runnable jar of the server and click start. Every make sure everything here is correct. Click start and boom, your server will be started. It will probably ask you to confirm the EU line. So I'm going to wait for that to happen and then you can click accept EU line. There you go. And then click start again. And now you can go into the log right here. And the log is your console. So this is really cool because it's a really nice GUI. It's really, really simple. And you can run everything from right here. So here we go. It's starting up. So let's just start up Minecraft, I guess, and see if it works, right? It's all that's left to do. If you guys want a tutorial on port forwarding, etc., let me know, because right now this is only visible to your local LAN. So if you want to port forward that so that other people from other places can join, you will need to port forward that on your router. Just port forward port 25565 from your local IP address. For me, that would be 192.168.62. That's it. You just port forward that and then people can join on your public IP, not your local one. Because if you give your local one to people, they won't be able to join unless you use Hamachi, for example. Hamachi will actually let them join. So we're just gonna start up Minecraft right here. Um, the world spawn is almost created. How exciting. It's now created, sick. So now let's just wait for this thing to download and uh, see how we're doing. Oh, wow. whoa, I have never played on 116.1. What is this? Uh, ba -ba -da -ba. No, you did not. That's not there. Okay, so it's not showing up on the local down here, which I thought it would be. So that's not showing up there, but I'm just gonna type in the IP address. I think it was 61. It's 62. And now let's connect. Here we are. And as you can see, it showed up in the console that I joined the game, so I can opt myself right here. Just like that. And because this is also a Samba Share NAS, all you have to do if you want to access this is literally just access the Samba Share. So, here you go. I think I'm opt now. Yeah, I'm a server operator, which means I'm not gonna cheat, you know, like. I'm not cheating. This isn't cheating. God damn it. I keep pressing L. L is my sprint key because it's on my mouse. But there's a fire. Okay, no, let's let's ignore the fire. Let's just let it burn. Here you go. Here you go, guys. We have literally created a server from an old device that you probably may not have been using. Like for example, an old laptop or an old computer. This is how simple it is. You get a lovely little GUI that you can play around with right here. You can install Forge, you can install mods, you can create a vanilla world if you want. All you have to do then is port forward it and anyone can access it. And then it's entirely up to you how much RAM you give it. You don't need to be paying other companies to add more RAM and pay more monthly because you're running it, which means you can add as much RAM as you like, which is why it would be great if I were the one running our Minecraft server because I have an as with 32 gigabytes of RAM that I normally run Minecraft servers on. But somebody is going to find my IP address. There's always one person that would find my IP address and just expose it. And I, I have too much importance. To, there's always that one person that ruins the party for everyone else. And I can't let that happen. So yeah, we're running off a paid server. So that's it. I paid for a server for you guys. So make sure to join that down in the description below. Again, the mod pack is down in the description below. It's Forge 1.12.2. We have plugins running. We're using Mochist, which was recommended to me by a member of our Discord. Thank you so much for that. It was a great idea. 
it works so much better than Sponge Forge, which I was trying to start up originally. But yeah, if you guys liked this video, if it helped you out, make sure to give it a like. If you disliked it, I guess this button works too. But let me know why down in the comment section below. If you guys are not yet part of the community, make sure to follow me on my social media here and here. Join us on Discord where we have a lovely growing community and that's where I communicate with you guys, let you guys know what's happening, future videos, things like that, ask you guys for suggestions. Join us on Reddit where I want to see my face getting memed to hell. And if you guys want to be notified of future content, I upload tech videos daily and VR videos on Mondays and Fridays. If that floats your boat, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell and see you again in the next one. Peace. It's so warm, it's too warm. <laughs>